Hi, everybody. I hope your day's going really well. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited to talk to you today, actually, because this is the day that you're going to bring your kids on board, and we're going to start... Whoa. There you go. Okay, start practicing the communication and stuff that um, I've mentioned before. <clears throat> so today's really important. But just to go over quickly, so far, what we've gotten is um, learn how to get rid of your have-tos. You know, really understand that you do get to choose how you spend your time. You are in control of your day. And then secondly, we kind of went through your um, defining your good day. Because that, again, is something in control, but that's the spine of how you're going to plan your day and your week to be able to get through the summer as successfully as you want to. That's going to be kind of your why. Today we're going to be talking about bringing your, your kiddos in. And I don't know... Um, Okay, let me get you a little bit of backstory, right? <laughs> Traditional parenting, the way that we've um, always done things, or quote unquote, always done things right, was almost that parenting was a, um, a combative or competition type thing. You know, think back as the, um, if your parents told you to do something, the only appropriate response, like if they said jump, the only appropriate response was how high. You got no say so in, um, you know, anything, if you talked back, if you questioned, if you came up with an alternative plan, all those things were considered disrespectful and rude and, you know, punished and yelled at. I did that when I first <clears throat> had kids, too, because that's how I was raised. My parents were raised, like, multi multiple generations have been raised like that. But what happens in those situations, not only is it combative, but you're setting, um, you're setting this scenario up where it's always a win-lose, right? So in order for the kid to behave, you have to, quote-unquote, win. So when they do what you tell them to do and they're obedient, then you win. But in order for you to win, that means there has to be a loser in the equation too, right? And over time, when your kids are constantly losing or not even having an opportunity to voice their own wants, needs, concerns, questions, it's going to build resentment. And so when I'm bringing the concept of an, a reward at the end of this challenge into this whole conversation, it's not to bribe your kid. And you're not going to be saying, if you behave and if you do everything right, then you win this reward. It's really just to motivate them, give them a reason to come into the conversation, right? Give them um, a positive thing to work towards. And then also it'll give you an opportunity to be um, experimental with your phrasing. And then how you motivate um, your child to do or not do whatever it is that your um, goal is, whatever your good day looks like, right? It's a chance for you to play with language and play with approaches and play with different types of motivations. And so that's why it's there. So it's not like a bribe saying, okay, if you do what I tell you to do, then you get this candy or you get this whatever treat. The reward's there to bring them into the conversation and to give you an opportunity to explore a little bit exactly what's going on. And so that's the first point that I wanted to bring up is how important language is, right? Um, any of you, I know the people, <laughs> any of you here, if, if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend this book. It's called The Four Agreements. It's very small. Um, very powerful, very simple book, but there's an entire chapter in there dedicated to, um, it's called Be Impeccable With Your Words, right? And it's, it illustrates how powerful and how valuable your choice of language is, um, made, like in talking to yourself as well as talking to others. And with kids especially, because they don't necessarily have the life experience that you do to try to filter through things, they take words very, very seriously. So your word choice matters. And so when you're bringing them into this conversation, avoid, you probably want to avoid things like, well, last summer was so terrible, so this one's going to be better. Or, you know, you have this bad behavior that we need to stop. Like, try to avoid anything negative that way. It's better to approach them and say, look, I've got this idea, and let's see if this will work. Let's work together. You know, this is what I want to accomplish, and this is why I want you here, and together we can work. Like, make it a more positive um, more motivating and inspiring conversation because you're not you don't want to shame your child again into obedience because one is not going to last and then two you're adding to the shame that ADHD children feel already they get so much more negative feedback from the world than a person without ADHD and then coming from you again about you know we're going to stop this bad behavior and you're going to do this better than last time and all of these different things and so this is a different just bring them in in a more positive way in a more motivating um, factor one thing you do need to pay attention to, not all children, and especially children with ADHD, don't always understand, um, don't understand things the first time you say them, or they might like zone out and not pay attention to what you're saying. So when you're talking and you're having this conversation, be prepared to repeat yourself, but not repeat yourself in the same way. So you might use different hand gestures or you might use um, 
different words or change the orders or use more adjectives, like more descriptive type words or more action words, just prepare to kind of um, work with and speak to your child in a way that he or she is going to respond to. So if you notice they're glazing over or they look confused, don't get frustrated. That's just how their nervous system works. And so be prepared to have to explain it multiple ways, different times and different methods, and eventually you're gonna figure it out. The second thing to keep in mind, I think I brought this up before, but it's worth remembering, the ADHD brain is not gonna be able to maintain a long list of um, orally given instructions, right? And so um, the reminders we talked about, you know, with, if you have a child old enough to have a cell phone, it's perfectly okay to put like calendar alerts on there. Um, I like to write things down and I put them in places that my kids are going to go. Like I'll put something on the bathroom mirror, on the you know bathroom mirror, on the front of the refrigerator, or to the door outside, and even breaking it up. Right, so I might put one thing in the bathroom. Hey, don't forget to brush your teeth and clean up when you're done. Um, over here, tape to your TV. Okay, you only get an hour today, or however long you know set your limits. Do that. Kind of put them in different places um, as a visual reminder of what they need to do, not to do, what their limits are, what they're not, what they're not. Um, I know with my son, first thing in the morning, I've got this big thing. Is like, okay, set the oven timer to make sure that you get off your screen in time, and you got to read at least, <laughs> you know, a chapter of your book today. Kind of do it that way. Make sure there's some kind of visual or audio reminder of what they need to get done. And it could be charts, and it could be calendars. And then again, when you're doing it, choose your words carefully. Language matters here. Don't say, oh, I know you can't remember, so therefore I'm going to write it down. It's more things like, look, to make it easier on you, I'm going to write these things down, and I'm going to put them here. Um, Language, 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 language matters, especially to your younger children, this, uh, like seven to, well, actually forever, but like, you know, starting about seven and up, the, the words have real impact on them as they're starting to kind of comprehend the world around them in a little more sophisticated way. These words that you choose to describe what you want them to do or not to do is really, really significant. And then when you put up these physical reminders, you might have to change them. Because again, they'll put blinders on them. They see something repeatedly, and unless it's like a flashlight at them, they're gonna ignore it too. So one day you might put it on the fridge, and the next day you might put it on the counter, or the next day you might you know, put it on a bedroom door. Kind of just be prepared to change things around. Um, it keeps you from having to nag, and it's a, a motivation that works with them, and then the change will catch their attention, so they're more likely to focus on it a little better. And then also, when you're talking about these expectations, Getting their input is very, imp it's very important, and it's going to have a huge impact on your relationship with them and their willingness to cooperate. And so if you line up, okay, this is the things that we want to limit, these are the things that I want you to accomplish, whatever your good day looks like, present it to them and say, look, I want your input, what do you think? And listen to them, <laughs> okay? So if they're like, look, you know, I don't know. I'm too tired at the morning to worry about chores, but I promise I'll get them done right after lunch. Or um, also say, you know, mom, that's really hard for me to do mom myself. And then, then you can say, okay, well then what can we replace? You know, just kind of have their, um, have their input, give them a voice, let them be seen, let them be heard, let them know that you understand that their opinions matter because this affects their day too. And you're empowering them, right? And so when they can speak up to you and not in an argumentative way, because you're having a rational discussion with two equals who are seeing each other and talking to each other respectfully. So it's not the result of some argue or fight or, or irritation. There's no emotion involved. You're very, you know, kind of neutral lining up what you want, what your expectations are, getting their input. And then you can figure out a pattern that works for you both. Um, um, um. Okay, now the reward. I, I prefer doing something very specific to my child's preferences. Now, if you have more than one child, you can, um, I don't know, alternate one, <laughs> one for one day or one for another day. Just kind of go with it, right? And so that's, um, I know with my kids, the zoo was always great for um, my little one. Lucas, when he was in school, was the library. He absolutely loved the library. Or, you know, take him to the swimming pool or take him to a movie, whatever it is. Or, or go to an arts and crafts store and let them buy whatever it is that their latest... Um, hyper-focus obsession is, right? <laughs> Do something like that, but get it specific to your kid because it's gonna be something that they want to work towards because they value it. It's not just, well, let's go shopping because mom wants to go shopping. You know, what if your kid doesn't like shopping? So make the reward something that's specific to your child or children. And then um, when you're going forward, use it as a motivator, a motivator, not a threat. So let's say um, they broke one of the 
they didn't meet whatever criteria you laid out, right? Whether it was a chore that could be done or something they need to not do or whatever, um, whatever, again, picture that your day looks like. If they didn't do something that got you guys closer to that one good day, don't threaten and say, if you don't do this, and if you don't fix this, and if you don't do this right now, then we're not gonna do whatever the award is at the end. Again, resentment, anger, frustration, and then when you're coming at a child that way, they often feel attacked. And so that, especially again with the ADHD nervous system and the way that they tend have a tendency to to rejection, it will automatically put their nervous system in a fight, flight, freeze mode as opposed to an action. And so that's where you're gonna get the arguments and the meltdowns when you're trying to force something on them, especially using a threat of taking something away. And this something they hadn't even gotten yet, right? So it, it might not even be a real consequence to them. So yeah, okay, but it, you know, it's Wednesday, we're not doing this till Sunday, so that time disparity. Instead, use it as a, like, a, um, like a motivating factor, right? And phrase it as, you know what, this isn't going to take you very long, just go ahead and do it because if you get it done, then look how much fun we're going to have. You know, try to um, bring it up in a way that they can respond positively, your words are positive, and then your energy is positive. And so when you're not coming at them in a critical way, you're like, look, you know, let's, let's get this done, um, let's turn on some music to make sure that it happens, or, or, you know, get off your thing now, or, you know, however you, you do it, do it in, in an enthusiastic, in a positive way and motivating them towards something that they want to do as opposed to trying to motivate them with fear, anger, frustration, resentment, because those long-term are not gonna have the positive effect that you want to um, on your relationship with your child and then on your child's self-confidence in and of himself. And so when you're bringing them on, keep that in mind. Um, language is very, very important. The reward needs to be specific. Don't use the reward as a threat, use it as a motivator, and then make sure you get your child's input on um, the hows and what's and why's that you want this done. Give them a voice, let them be heard. This is the first step towards teaching them to being empowered human beings rather than victims of a diagnosis that they can't control. So keep that in mind. Um, again, I'm not getting, a, I'm not lecturing anybody, but I guess I'm gonna kind of lecture. I'm not getting any kind of feedback or questions or comments or anything like that in the group, which is fine. I'm not forcing you to. I just wanna kind of remind you that this is a, this is a free version of what my paid coaching program can potentially look like. But in order for you to have that experience over this 10 days, I need to be able to um, respond specifically to what you, your needs are, right? And so um, when I'm doing my one-on-one -on -one coaching and we go into a lot of language, that's what I was talking about earlier, the word choice stuff. You know, how does your child respond to things? Does your child prefer descriptive, like enthusiastic words? Or is your child more an action-oriented person? Um, the same thing even with the physical reminders, you know, or different colored post-it notes on them that are gonna grab their attention, or do they need one list in one place so they can come and check it off? These are things that are specific to you, your circumstances, and your child. And right now, you have the rest of this challenge to get very, for me to, to be able to coach you on your child and your situation, you know? You signed up for this, it's great. I'm so excited that y'all are here. I'm very happy to have, um, have this group of people in here. I just wanna remind you, that if you really wanna take advantage of the, of the content that's here, I'm gonna need some feedback and input put from you guys, okay? And it is a safe space, it is a private group. There's not a, that many people in here and nobody's gonna judge you because everybody's here for the same reason with the same circumstance. I hope that is helpful. I really look forward to hearing from some of you in the group and um, take care, have a great afternoon, bye.